Hello, I'm Dr. Pei Yong Lam, and I'm an adolescent medicine physician at BC Children's Hospital's Eating Disorders Program. Welcome to this four part parent and family education series on eating disorders in young people. Today, I will be talking about the impact of having an eating disorder on a young person's growing body, as well as the reasons for urgent hospitalization. The most common reason for an admission to hospital because of an eating disorder is because of acute dehydration. This means that the young person's body fluids are at a very low level, and this causes a low blood pressure and a heart rate that results in dizziness and fainting. Sometimes if vomiting is involved, then minerals and salts in the body may be compromised as well. This results in an irregular heart rhythm which further complicates the low heart rate. That is why every assessment of a young person with an eating disorder should not only incorporate weight and height, but also blood pressure, heart rate and blood levels of minerals and salts. The aim of an admission should be to replenish the fluids within the body, to correct the imbalances of minerals and salts, and to monitor the heart rate until a regular rhythm has been established. This next image is going to show how an eating disorder can affect your whole body. Let's start with the brain. When a person has been starved or malnourished for a long period of time, their brain actually shrinks. This means that they cannot think clearly or rationally, they have trouble maintaining focus and concentration. In terms of their mood, they may become irritable, moody and very withdrawn. Moving on to their hair. If someone has been starved for some time, their hair becomes thin and brittle and may actually start to fall out. Abnormal hair will also grow in other parts of their body. Starvation also affects the heart by lowering blood pressure and heart rate and sometimes causing an irregular heart rhythm. Starvation also causes the bone marrow to shut down. It stops producing red and white cells that are essential for the immune function of our body. If you are not putting enough protein or carbohydrates or other minerals and salts into your body, this can cause your muscles and joints to weaken and fail. The kidneys go into failure without enough fluids in the body, particularly affecting potassium, sodium and magnesium levels. Your intestines are not being stimulated to push through food, so they become slow and this causes constipation and bloating. When you do not have enough nutrition or energy in your body, in a period of prolonged starvation or malnourishment, the body will stop producing adequate levels of hormones. In young girls, this causes periods to stop and could compromise future fertility. In young boys, it causes lower testosterone levels. Moving on to the skin. Starvation also compromises the integrity of the skin. It causes skin to bruise easily and heal much slower. Starvation and malnourishment cause a reduction in the body's metabolic rate as it's trying to adapt to less food and less energy. Over time, the body will reduce the heart rate and blood pressure with the lowered metabolic rate. After several more weeks, the body will then stop sending as much blood to the surface of the skin to conserve energy. This makes the young person feel cold and tired. A low metabolic rate over time causes skin changes and the young person will feel cold. 
there is less glucose and energy going to the brain, and this makes you feel tired, weak, and more irritable. After many months of starvation, the body will adapt further by not maintaining hair growth. Instead, hair is shed, and new hair grows in different places on the body to help keep the body warm. Muscles will shrink or atrophy, and more importantly for young women, their periods will stop as this takes a tremendous amount of energy. There was a study in the mid-1950s looking at the impact of prolonged starvation on the human body. This study showed that starvation to a certain degree caused thought patterns in the brain to change such that it was difficult to eat to regain the weight lost. This has been backed up by more recent studies of brain imaging showing that the brain shrinks when starved and that this is related to changes in thoughts, behaviours and emotions. Recent studies also show that brain structure changes again with refeeding and renourishment and that some of the changes observed during starvation may become less intense. The majority of our patients are female and therefore much of the eating disorders research has been with female patients. The most common complication of having an eating disorder is amenorrhea, which means the loss of regular periods. In some cases for our younger patients, this could mean a delay in the start of their puberty. The implications of this are not just for future fertility, but a low estrogen level prevents a young woman from going into puberty and therefore prevents height development and body organ development. A lowered estrogen also compromises bone development in a young female, as estrogen is vital in the process of bone being laid down at this age. In both boys and girls, adolescence is a time where bone is laid down for the rest of their lives. If anything occurs to interrupt this process during adolescence, it could lead to the development of osteoporosis or thin bones in the future. Oestrogen and testosterone are important factors in bone development. And again, anything that lowers these levels, for example malnutrition, can also impact on bone development. Bone changes are reversible with weight restoration and a return to normal hormone levels. There is often a catch-up phase in physical recovery. Therefore, a change in height and a return to bone health are good indicators of physical recovery. With every new assessment, we will always plot the young person's weight and height on a centile chart. We also need to track their previous weights and heights so that we can get a sense of where they've been and what their growth potential is. Every young person also needs to be assessed in terms of their family proportions and genetics. This allows us to focus our medical goals according to each individual. Physical recovery is not just about weight restoration. It's about a return to normal body functions according to the age of the young person. Although weight restoration is important, there are other key factors in recovery. They are an improved energy level, improved sense of well-being, height growth, improved bone density, and the start or return of monthly periods. Recovery involves changes in thinking, behaviour and emotions. And this will be covered in more detail later in the series. I hope this information has been helpful for you and your family. Thank you for your time and I wish you all the best for your child's recovery.